Greetings, my friends. I am out on a beautiful spring day. You, I don't know if you can, well, you can see a little bit of snow behind me, perhaps. We've just been buried in snow here in Wisconsin, and finally it's warmed up, and we have some bare ground. So I'm out with my family, and we're all laying, soaking in some sun, just smelling the, the fresh earth and the smell of leaves and pine needles, all those things that you kind of become a little nostalgic about in the middle of winter when it seems like winter will never end. As I was laying there, I started thinking about earthing. If you guys haven't heard of this, it's, it's this rather controversial, um, depending on, on how you'd see it, either a a new age wacko thing or a pseudoscience or a science. <laughs> uh, everybody has different opinions on it, thus controversial. And the concept is that if I'm barefoot or my skin is touching the earth, that I am going to receive energy, specifically negative ions, and that's going to help to balance my, my electrical field, my electromagnetic field and create a better state of health, etc. And you know, it's, it's funny because I don't know a whole lot about it actually, but I've been asked to come and speak on it, and so I've done a little bit of research. And as usual, there's these very polarized camps. I, I think this almost follows for anything whether it's a food, are bananas good for you, or are they just going to kill you if you eat even one? Uh, <laughs> earthing, is it, is it real or is it not? And when you go online and start searching something out, you can find evidence or opinions on almost either, you know, on either side of almost any issue. What do we believe these days? So this is an interesting one, the earthing, because, uh, you know, the skeptic inside of me just aligns with the scientific articles I, or the scientists that are rather debunking it, <laughs> and, oh, butterfly, um, <laughs> and, you know, there's another side of me that it feels good when I lay on the ground or I walk barefoot. And as you probably know, if you're a longtime watcher of my videos, I'm barefoot constantly whenever I can be so. As I lay there thinking about it, I started wondering if this earthing controversy has a lot more to teach us than whether earthing is real or not. If it teaches us something about our, cons our current state, of, of human mentality. I know a lot of people are feeling like there's a lot of division in the world right now. And there's, when we look at almost anything, there's places where we could come together in it. And there's, and there's places we could divide ourselves. I just switched my location because of the wind. If we use Earthing, as an example, we can see that science and common sense are going to show us that when two objects come together in the world, at its most basic, when those two objects come together, they are going to alter each other's states in some way. This holds true, to my knowledge, for uh, subatomic particles that can entrain to each other's states. If you think about two human beings coming together, we tend to start to mimic each other's body language and even voice inflections. If you think about a cold object and a hot object, as they come together, they're going to transfer heat and start to come to a similar state. So. Those are just a few examples, but everywhere you look, if you think about it, a deer and a wolf, they come together and 
<laughs> they can alter their states quite a bit as they become each other, essentially, in a very real sense. So this idea of things in training, altering each other's state in some way, and often coming to a uh, equilibrium of some kind, seems to have some truth to it. Now sometimes things come together and they can enter into a state of conflict, but there also, they're altering each other's states in some way. So the important part for me about all this is that this is an example of where a scientist and an earthing advocate could come together and they could start really attacking each other about differences. Equally, they could come together and they could start talking about similarities. And what we're doing in our world right now is so much of the former, of coming together and talking about what divides us, coming up against each other, whether it's you know, politically or because of our religion, and we just look at the other person and try to find everything that's wrong with them. What would happen instead if we started to see our similarities? If we use that as the basis, if that's our foundation, then we can create a rapport. And from there we can explore our differences. Because those differences, yes, they're important. We can't ignore them. But if we make those differences our foundation, then there's no chance of communication. There's no chance of coming together and seeing each other's views. So that's what I'm really talking about in this video. It's not about whether earthing is real or not. It's about what if we could make our base of communication the things that we share in common as human beings? Then, from there, explore our differences. Please share your thoughts, ideas, your wisdom, your insight in the comments below. Share, like, if you enjoyed this video. If you would like to help me to make these videos, you can stand beside me by becoming a patron on Patreon. Thank you, my friends. Talk with you soon.